Now on Radio 4, In Business. Peter Day asks how musicians can make money in the digital music industry. For the past 20 years, the pop music industry has been in crisis. Recorded music was one of the first industries to be horribly disrupted by the internet. Sales of compact discs plummeted, battered by piracy and new ways of listening to music. This disruption continues. But there are now signs that after years of huge uncertainty, the record industry is learning to live with it. And so perhaps are the artists and bands who provide the music. That evolving process of perhaps mutual understanding is what this programme is all about. Think about the Holy Roman Empire and the order and the control and the understanding and the history that went with that. When the internet came along and it hit the music industry, it changed everything. Jeremy Silver is a music industry veteran. He's the author of the book Digital Medieval, The Last 20 Years of the Music Industry and the Next 20. We're in the dark ages still of where all this is going to go and where it's going to take us. And I think the challenges and the level of disruption that the traditional businesses have had is immense. And it it resulted in people forgetting, actually, the ways of the past and not knowing what the new rules were. And we're in that period now when we're all trying to work out what the new rules are, but there isn't one rule. There are lots and lots of different ones right now. The history of the music industry is essential to an understanding of its present and future. There's been a symbiosis, though, hasn't there, between companies that made the things to play music on or with and people who recorded that music uh, in order for those machines to be sold. And it's an interesting chicken-and-egg question. The BBC was formed by a group of radio set manufacturers so they'd have something to listen to on their radio sets. It's not much point in having a record player if you don't have any records to play. So, so that relationship has evolved, and the first impact that the internet had on the record companies was actually none, no impact at all, was a sense of, well, this is an interesting technology, but what's it got to do with us? Then came the anger stage. The companies thumped the table and uh, excoriated everybody as pirates, didn't they? Yes. Many record company executives today would look back over the last 20 years and say, that was a huge mistake, we should never have done that. It was, if you like, it was the, it was the worst possible PR campaign you could organise for yourself. You couldn't have thought of a worse thing to do than to start suing your own customers. And regrettably, that's what happened. Record companies have won a major battle in their war to stop music being available for free on the internet. A court in America has banned the website Napster from providing free access to copyrighted music. Well, enter a genius. Steve Jobs came up not just with Apple but also with iTunes. An extraordinary movement because that then got the industry back on side of something connected with the internet, didn't it? And this was licensed and and paid for and um, okay by them. Yes. If you look back at that period, Philips used to own the company that was called Polygram, which is now Universal Music. And in 1998, Eight, I think it was, Philips decided to dispense with the sound recording part of its organisation. And so uh, it meant that that bond between the hardware, the Philips CD players and the playback devices, and the music that could play on it was broken. And it wasn't until Steve Jobs came along with the iPod and reconnected them in a new way that a digital solution to that came about. So there is a very clear sort of historical cycle that you can see, which is all about that relationship between the music and the player, but different people have actually made those things work in different ways. We now come to a new world of streaming. Ah, yes. You know, for the longest time, the transition from analogue to digital looked very much in the digital world the way it did in the analogue world. That's to say, I used to have a single or an album, now I have a digital single or an album. Then along came Spotify and other streaming services like it, and it changed the story, because now there was a model which said, you can listen to as much as you want for this amount of money a month, and you can choose whatever you want to listen to. Caught up in these paroxysms of change are the musicians who make the music and who want to go on making...